Kellerman. I'm Molly Karam. How's we'll everybody just, we'll doing? We'll just air it because... Yes, that's true. That's right. I've been battling weather. I'm, Everybody's I'm, I'm, sick. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm staying well, away from all y'all. Are you sick? No, I'm healthy. I'm healthy, too. Been, I'm healthy. I've been, I've been in bed all weekend. Ugh. All weekend since Friday night. But I'm better now. Good. Not 100%, but I'm better. I think the I know Cowboys why. Yeah, Cowboys we'll get to that, that in just better, a bit. But we got some breaking news out of our nation's capital. Let's get right there. Redskins team president Bruce Allen and head coach Jay Gruden met at Redskins Park early this morning to infirm Gruden he has been fired. A source tells Adam Schefter that assistant head coach and offensive line coach Bill Callahan will be the interim head coach. Gruden made the playoffs once in 2015 and was below 500 in his tenure. Stephen A., you called it last week. What's your reaction to this latest news? Well, first of all, I appreciate you acknowledging that I called it last week. because I said Monday it was going to happen. I said last Monday. I ain't hear no other show on ESPN acknowledging that. It just amazes me. But if I was wrong, I'd have heard from everybody. But that's neither here nor there. Here's the reality. Jay Gruden should have been gone. Uh, this is too little, too late on the part of Daniel Snyder. Uh, Jay Gruden's record as a head coach is 35 uh, 41, 49, and 1. That's 14 games under 500. He has not been impressive, and more importantly than that, again, I don't know the man personally. I'm only echoing the sentiments that have been said about him, which is, is that they questioned his work ethic. Uh, they said that he hid behind Sean McVay. Daniel Snyder, Max Kellerman, is ultimately the individual that takes the greatest hit because you had a guy in... Um, in, in Sean McVay, who was there as your offensive coordinator before he got the Rams job. You had a Kyle Shanahan who was once in your organization. You let him go. So you have individuals that are considered, that are highly respected and are held in, in high esteem in the National Football League that are head coaches for other franchises that worked under Jay Gruden. And Daniel Snyder let them walk out the door in favor of keeping Jay Gruden whose work ethic he questioned. There were questions about his relationship with executive Bruce Allen, although they both denied that there was any friction uh, coming into this season. In the end, here's the reality, and this is the harsh reality. The only reason why Jay Gruden got the head coaching job to begin with and the only reason why he lasted this long, according to people that I speak to in the National Football League, is because of his last name. John Gruden wasn't in... The, with the Oakland Raiders. He was in the Monday night booth telling everybody at the time he didn't want to be a head coach anymore. So they thought that they'd get, you know, you know, just a reincarnation per se, same last name, pedigree, et cetera, et cetera. It did not work out that way. Some people ain't meant to be a head coach. Some people are destined to be coordinators. And Jay Gruden's record as head coach of the Washington Redskins proved just that. The issue with Washington is the owner, Dan Snyder. And you know what I love about this? Like with Jim Dolan with the Knicks. You keep hiring, firing people, whatever you want to do. The futility on the field is what it is since you bought the team. The more you get rid of guys and bring new guys in, the more we see there's one constant. His record of failure, Dan Snyder, is there for everyone to see. He's the worst owner in the NFL. And one of the worst in sports. And, and by the way, he's almost dangerous because he really is a football fan. Like, he really does love the team, right? But because he doesn't know much compared to actual football people, if he gets attached to a guy, to, a, to an idea, he's going to overrule his football people. And we've, we, that's been reported several times. Stephen A., so a fish rots from the head down. And was Jay Gruden a good coach? Obviously not. If you listen to people like... Deshaun Jackson. Stephen A., when Deshaun Jackson left Philly, he was upset about it. But did you hear him saying things like they don't want to win in Philadelphia and all that kind of stuff? No. That locker room was no good. When he left Washington, and it wasn't even like he said it with malice. It was just like, bro, you walk in there and it's just, you know, they don't think they're going to win. That was the team under Jay Gruden. But my, and so, yes, you have to get rid of him. But my point is you can get rid of Jay Gruden – Get another guy, whatever. The problem starts at the very top, Dan Snyder. So as a Giants fan, I'm glad he owns the team. I want him to own that team forever. And, and, and by the way, that's with sensitivity to the idea that I don't mention their name. I call them the franchise from Washington because I find it highly offensive, that name. And, of course, he defends it and arrogantly doubles down. And, and you know, we're never going to change the name and all this kind of stuff. 
He's bad on a lot of fronts. The, pro- the football product being the primary one. Well, the bottom line is this. They've only won two playoff games since 1992. Since 1992, this franchise, they won a Super Bowl in 1991. They won a playoff game that next year and lost in the divisional playoff round in 1992. Since 1992, spanning nearly 30 years, the Washington Redskins have two playoff games on its resume and only one playoff victory uh, since, uh, since, I'm sorry, they had a playoff victory in 2005. That was their last playoff victory. They have not won a playoff game since 2005. We're not talking about Super Bowls here. They haven't won a playoff playoff game. They haven't won a playoff game. And they've only been at the playoffs three times in the last 14 The last in the playoffs, uh, 2015. We'll have much more on this later, including what's next for the Washington Redskins. But uh, let's get to Dallas. It was all about the errands at Jerry's World. Both Rodgers and Jones. Jones had four rushing touchdowns en route to a 34-24 victory over Dallas. Dak Prescott and Mari Cooper did lead a comeback. But it wasn't enough. Dak, Zeke, talk to me. We're not backing down. As I said, we'll we'll take this one on the chin. We're going to take the good, take the bad. We're going to learn from it. And um, hopefully we'll look back at this and say uh, this was a turning point or this was was good for us. I think it is a reality check, you know. Um, I think we just got to, you know, take take this loss, take these last two losses and and use them as fuel. We got to come out and, uh, you know, play a lot harder, play a lot better. and, and execute, man. It's going to be hard to win games in this league if we're going to keep shooting ourselves on the foot. Uh, so, I mean, we just got to be a better team. <laughs> I'll start with you. Yeah. I feel like I need a name for this, Stephen A. I'll, I'll marinate on what exactly that should be. People could tweet us, mm. let us know. Yeah. Because uh, he's something special. Tell me this. What was the headline from yesterday? Was it the Packers win or that the Cowboys were exposed? Believe it or not. Normally, I would sit up there and I'd tell you that it was the Cowboys being exposed, obviously, because they lost the second game in a row. And as a result, they're, not, they're no longer in, in complete control, of first take within the NFC East. They're tied with the Philadelphia Eagles now. Just a couple of weeks ago, Max, a couple of weeks ago, we were sitting there talking about the Philadelphia Eagles. They were in a must-win situation, going into a Thursday night game against those Green Bay Packers. I never thought That's that right. was must-win for the record. I did. I said, hey, if the Eagles lose that game, and the Cowboys win Sunday against Teddy Bridgewater because there was no Drew Brees, that the Philadelphia Eagles would have been three games out, and that would have been that. And lo and behold, just 10 old days later, 10 little old days later, it's tied 3-2 within the NFC East. Just like that, that black cat running around that franchise showed his ugly head. And in the the result, we sit here today with the Dallas Cowboys, no longer in complete control of that NFC East. Now, now let's get this. Let's get to the specifics. Because as we look at the Green Bay Packers, we saw Aaron Rodgers, 22 at 34, 238 yards. My personal opinion, that damn Aaron Jones. What is it? 19 carries, 107 yards, 5.6 yards per carry, four touchdowns against those Dallas Cowboys. Seem to be struggling a little bit against that running game. And the thing about it is that their defense for the Green Bay Packers, we haven't been raving enough about them. We've noticed them. We pay attention to them, Matt Kellerman. But at the same time, we haven't given them the appreciation that they deserve. Suddenly, Ezekiel Elliott didn't look so formidable. Following up an 18 carat 34 yard, 35 yard performance against New Orleans Saints. What does he do? Second go around. 18 carries, I'm sorry, 12 carries, 62 yards. Not bad. Looks like they should have gave him the ball more. But guess what? Dallas Cowboys didn't do that. Why? Because they want to run. They want to throw that football. Kellen Moore, your new offensive coordinator. He's not Scott Leonard. Hey, we're going to throw that football a little bit more. And the Green Bay Packers said, eh, eh, eh. Not so fast. Because we're not sure about your passing game. We're going to shut that thing down. Dallas Cowboys came into the game allowing just three sacks. This particular game, they gave up three sacks in one game. They got a little bit exposed offensively. You can punch them in the mouth. You can neutralize the run to some degree. Even when they pass the football effectively enough, like Amari Cooper having 226 yards receiving, in the end, it still didn't prove enough. They're front runners. When they got a lead, they look pretty damn good. When they had a deficit, panic sets in. This is what I love about the Dallas Cowboys. Max, I'll give it to you by saying this. In the end, as they climb and the pressure builds, Pressure, as they say in the country, breaks pipes. And that's exactly what happened yesterday afternoon in Big D. And I must say, I'm quite fond of what I saw. So if 
pressure of bust pipes, Stephen A., then you're agreeing that the Dallas Cowboys were exposed. Look, I hope this isn't Green Bay firing on all cylinders yet. It would be great if it's not, right? Mm -hmm. Then we got a real challenger mm -hmm. to win a title. The Cowboys, for whatever reason, I took Aaron Jones in Daily Fantasy, gave me 52 points and the win this week. Oh, And that's Good partly because, as, as Matthew Berry pointed out, by the way, the Dallas Cowboys, for some reason, and I don't know why, when you look at that linebacking core who did not look good, those guys did not look good yesterday, they have a problem covering running backs who can catch passes. And that's an issue because, I don't know, that's the entire league now. Mm. Anytime you have a real good running game, you're not just talking about a running back like Adrian Pete, not, not, not pitched that high, but a guy who's just going to run the ball. You're talking about a guy who can catch passes out of the hey. backfield. I reckon you're right. Yeah. Continue. And that's Aaron Jones. And, and going in, you knew that's a problem for the Dallas Cowboys. Why? Why did Van Der Esch and these guys – not look good. They're supposed to be. I, I've been, I was raving about them early. But are the Cowboys exposed? The answer is yes. They exposed the Cowboys here. Think about the wins they had early in the season. The Giants with Eli, Right now, the Giants have two wins. But that's only because Daniel Jones instead of Eli Manning. And that speaks as much to Eli Manning's poor play as what Daniel Jones did. If you would have just replaced Eli with a competent starting quarterback, like even like a Kirk Cousins type, they wouldn't have looked that bad early in the season. He couldn't get anything done. So that's when the Cowboys played the Giants and Washington and Miami. You're talking about some of the worst teams we can remember seeing. Miami's like the worst team anyone can remember in recent years. And Washington's not far behind. And the Giants at the time were in the same boat with them. That's why Eli Manning, who was supposed to play all season as Daniel Jones developed, got hanged after two games. Those are the teams that the Cowboys looked great against. Then as soon as they play real competition, they fold at home. By the way, against backup quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. No, you have to say that this game, if you're talking about the headline of this game, it's Cowboys exposed. They don't look, they look like Super Bowl pretenders right well, now. Well, first of all, let me say this. In all seriousness, Alexander King and Sullivan each had an interception against Dak Prescott. We can't ignore that. Zadarius Smith was all over the place. He was in Dak Prescott's face, even when he wasn't getting the sack. I mean, you got you, you talk about numerous hits on Dak Prescott, and this just seems to be an attitude about this Green Bay Packers defense. They're feisty. You got guys that are nasty. They come at you with it. We haven't seen that from a Green Bay Packers defense in years. We've been paying attention. Everything has been predicated on Aaron Rodgers, what he brings to the table. Back in the day, it was Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb. Most recently, it was the Geronimo Allison's with the Devontae Adams, okay? Then it was obviously just Aaron Rodgers, the relationship with Mike McCarthy or lack thereof, which he spoke about after the game in terms of speaking culturally how things have changed in Green Bay. But in the end, what it comes down to is that the Green Bay Packers have a defense. And I'm not saying that it might not be as elite as we think it is or it has looked against somewhat inferior competition over the first few weeks of the season. But in the end, when we look at this Green Bay Packers defense compared to what we used to see, there is no denying that these brothers are vastly improved. And if that is the case and you got any kind of running game in Green Bay. Prescott, we're going to get into Dak later in the show playing for a contract. We have Ezekiel Elliott who already got paid, and the question is, you know, against a run defense, by the way, that looked bad against Philadelphia. Right. Last time we saw him, like, what happened to that? That's not a vaunted defense. Everyone's touting the Green Bay defense. They got ran all over. But against the Cowboys, you can load up against Ezekiel Elliott, and it somehow works. And then Dak, I think a little too much is said about his performance yesterday. He was hitting guy like Cooper drops a pass. <coughs> Dak, to me, was okay. No. But he was okay to me. I know Jerry Jones is getting upset, and you're getting upset, and everyone's getting oh, upset. Oh, I'm not upset. Right. Oh, you, were, you weren't a little bit impressed by the comeback? The almost comeback? Yeah. No, he, because, because he put him himself. Amari Cooper? Listen, listen, they listen. Got themselves I understand that, but he put himself in bad spots. And all I could think about with Dak Prescott, which we'll get into later on in the show, is how he's potentially costing himself money with each passing. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. disagree about that, obviously. We're going to debate that. But I think right now, if you say, is that about Green Bay? Not yet. Let's see Aaron Rodgers really start to ball. And then I'll say, okay, now it's about Green Bay. Because we don't know. Maybe in this system he never really gets to do that. And, but okay. But, but the Dallas Cowboys now in consecutive weeks got exposed. They only have wins over terrible teams this year. 
All right. Your Cowboys will be here in New York next week if you want to check them out. They'll be facing the Jets, and then it'll be the Packers and Lions. That should be a good name. That'll be on ESPN Monday Night Football, but a lot more uh, to come here, especially tonight. This is going to be a really good